So, you're not done talking yet, eh? Not yet. Um, while I've got my planes out, I, I thought I'd give you a little tour. Um, as I've said before, this plane is probably about 100 years old. I'm, I'm going to do a, a detailed analysis of the age and anthology of this plane later, but it works very well. You saw how well it worked, and it's kind of a standard sort of plane design. And we have the blade here, the blade and what's called the chip breaker, which, which directs the shavings up this thing here. Uh, I will do a video in the future about tuning up a plane so it behaves properly. The two biggest things you need to do is to make the blade very sharp and polish the leading edge of the chip breaker because if this is nice and smooth and the shavings are going to curl up here and uh, with minimal friction and it's going to work very well. Now, um, for the most part, you, you, uh, you'd have to go back a long way in history to be able to find a decent plane that you could buy right out of the hardware store. This would have come from a hardware store and it works well. And nowadays, if you go to a hardware store and you buy a plane, it's probably going to be really crummy. And, and if you've had trouble planing, that may be the reason why. But uh, there are some amazing hand planes that are being made these days. I didn't think such a thing was possible. Uh, this is a Veritas plane. It's, it's Canadian made, made by the people at Lee Valley Tools. This whole idea of manufacturing new high quality planes in the Western world, not in some Asian plant somewhere, but homegrown, true North American stuff. That's the brainchild of Leonard Lee. He's the founder of Lee Valley Tools. He passed away a few years ago. I did have the chance to talk with him on several occasions. Uh, and, and one occasion was about the planes that they make. So I just want to give you a quick little tour here about why I think they're so impressive. First of all, thick, heavy, beefy, cast iron, of a certain kind that is ideal for planes. So not just any old cast iron and really heavy construction. So you see, whereas this one, uh, this, this, this had a device here that used a lever to hold the plane blade down. This has a, a threaded arrangement like this. Uh, it allows you to dial in more or less pressure, which is kind of a nice thing. Also look finely machined. You know, very precise here. So when this when this clamps the blade down, there's full contact here. It's it's pressing the whole width of the blade down. There's no high spots. It's machined properly. The plane iron itself is astonishing. Look how thick that is. And why does thickness matter? Well, because you want that blade to remain rigid. You don't want it to wiggle or chatter as you're planing. This, this plain iron is pretty good, but look at the difference in thickness. I mean, it, it's huge. What is this? This is at least twice as thick as that one. And, um, you know, easy to sharpen, thick. The steel is excellent. It takes a fantastic edge. I've used this a little bit since I've sharpened it, but let's see if it'll still... It needs a little bit. It's not shaving here too well right now, but it takes an edge so well. Now, it's one thing to have a blade that's rigid, but the blade has to be fully supported, too, by the body of the plane. Otherwise, it's still going to chatter. So look at all the support surface here. No nonsense, flat. The whole area supports that that uh, plane iron. Um, this is a pretty good plane. You've seen it perform, but... You see here the surface is not continuous. It's just around the perimeter for holding that plane iron. So I guess what we've got here, we've, we've actually got a, a new hand tool that's way better than in the olden days, which is something you don't often see. So uh, another nice thing about this plane is the fact that you can change the, the width of the throat um, let's see here. You can make it open more or less. And why does that matter? Well, if you're taking coarse cuts, you want to have this opening fairly wide because the shavings are big 
and they need lots of room to get out. But if you're taking a fine, a fine cut, then you want this, this gap to be fairly close because this part of the plane, this part of the plane here is supporting the wood. It's kind of holding the wood down while the blade is trimming it. So if this was wide open, it wouldn't be holding the wood down, so the plain iron would have a tendency to lift the grain and to cause tearing. So that's why when you want to take a fine cut, you'll close this, this throat opening up quite a bit so that the wood is fully supported as close to the blade as possible. And you can get away with that when you're taking fine cuts because the shavings are kind of small. So fit and finish, amazing. Um, this particular plane has some set screws on either side, which um, which which support the blade on the side, so it's not wiggling around from side to side. You can adjust that with these with these set screws and uh, heft, fit and finish. It's just really amazing and quite encouraging to me. You know, when I found out about these, when Lee Valley first started to produce them. I asked Leonard Lee, how can you do this? Because I didn't think something like this was economically possible. I, I was led to believe that all this you know, heavy cast iron stuff could only be economically done in the Orient. That you know, we, we pay people too much money here and we just can't compete. And here, Mr. Lee turns around and does something like this, sets this in motion. His answer to me was technology. Uh, we can't compete on wages, but we can compete with technology. And so uh, the design, the manufacturing of this, I haven't seen the place where this happens, but I've been told that it's, it's highly automated. So there aren't really a whole lot of people behind this. It's just some really smart design and some really smart machinery. And we've got a plane now, which as I said, it's, it's every bit as good as the good old days planes. And and even better too. Well, thanks for joining me this week. Subscribe, like, hit the notifications bell so you know when I make new videos. Check out my website in the description box and sign up for my newsletter. Lots of people love it every Saturday morning and I think you will too.